Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Shadow Slayer from Team Sentinel. I'm bringing you guys another game review. This is going to be of Arkham Horrors Mansion of Madness. Uh, we got this not that long ago. It's very, very interesting. It's a game of exploration, mystery, and horror for two to five people. This game is made by Fantasy Flight Games, and they have done a phenomenal job with the game. So let me get right into it and tell you a little bit about the game. Well, the basic storyline of the game is you have two different kinds of people that you can play throughout the game. You can, uh, if you're playing two player, one player plays the investigator where they're going through the mansion trying to find out exactly what's going on. And they have a set objective, they need to figure out what their objective is and how exactly they can win and what's going on. And you have the keeper. The keeper's job is to keep you from winning and try to make himself win at all costs. So with that being said, the Keeper has set abilities that he can do within the mansion. He's basically kind of like he's playing God or, well, the Game Master, if y'all want to put it that way. It plays out very, very RPG based. Uh, you have to read the cards aloud because the fact that it is kind of like things are happening to you. Some cards say that you hear it aloud, don't, 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 pictures fly off the wall at you. It's very entertaining. Um, I've actually set up one of the maps for you, so I'm going to show that to you. Um, you have a few different scenarios that you can do. Uh, here's one of them. And the cool thing about it, the Keeper has the ability to change the game any way it wants it to. You see, when, the keep, I mean, when you're starting out, and the investigators, they actually have to pick which, I mean, uh, which scenario they want to do. And say this is one of them. Well, <clears throat> they have a certain storyline that they have to go by. But in the Keeper, he has to ask himself certain questions, how he wants things to unravel, and how he wants things to unfold. And depending on how he picks his answers, as they are found in the Keeper Guide, uh, the Keeper Guide is your Keeper Handbook. It tells you what exactly you have to do for every scenario that goes on. And depending on what your answers are, it tells you exactly where you put stuff within the mansion. So. The game is not going to get boring because you can change your answer every time and things are going to be different. Now, with that being mm. said, there's a few objectives, but I'll get to that in a minute. As I mentioned, you can either play as the investigators or someone has to play the keeper, always. So if you have more than two people, that extra person can either opt in to be a keeper, I mean, be the one keeper, and you have two investigators, and you can basically trade out as it goes. But, let me get into some of the people. Yeah. These are the guys. They're just little stand-in figures. Um, they are paintable. So, for you guys that actually like to paint figurines, it's just like Last Night on Earth that I showed you earlier. You can go through and you can paint them, make them look however you want to. They do have character cards that tell them certain things. It tells them what their heart is and how much sanity they have before they go nuts. And you have the Investigator Handbook. And this tells you what you have to do per said situation, uh, how you have to set the map up and everything else. And once the map is actually set up, you have the keeper. The keeper finds out how he wants the game to go, uh, how he wants the storyline to unfold, and with that he has to put out certain cards in certain areas. So let's say that I have a character. He is right here in this little space. I have a move with me. I have when moving, you have two movement actions and an action phase where you can pick up something, fight, heal yourself, so on and so forth. And, well, there's a card right here in this room saying that if I explore it, I get to find out what this card is. So I'm going to use my movement action. I'm going to go from in here to in here. That's one. And then I'm going to use my action to explore the room. And that's when I get an exploring card. And 3A. Well, that actually tells me that that's one of the clues for the game because these are hid throughout the board and it allows the investigators to find out exactly what's going on in the game and make things a little bit more interesting. But this is where the Keeper can kind of turn things around. All right, say I was right here. And say I wanted to get into this room right here, but look, the Keeper placed a lock. So I have to attempt to move and I have to do whatever the lock tells me to. And it says jam door, so I have to find, I mean, find out what my strength is. I have to test it using a D10, and if I pass it, I barge through the door. If not, it just kind of bounces me backwards like I ran into it, like it's RPG paste. Um, say that I got into the door, all right? Lock, I mean, it's unlocked. I'll go in, 
And this card that you see right here that's got squids on it, this is an obstacle. There are different obstacles that the keeper will push throughout the game. This one is actually called power failure. So <clears throat> with that, it adds puzzles into the game as well. You see, I have to, this is the main board it starts out with. I have to attempt to start here and make sure it gets over here. And then by that, you have to trade out, turn them, rotate them. And it's basically a fun little puzzle. Um, it's got, I think, five different puzzles that you have to do. And it's just a way for the keeper to try to slow you down. But with it, as I mentioned, you have health and you also have your sanity. So if something happens to you, then some strange effects might occur as well. Because the keeper can also play spells. It allows the keeper to have certain abilities because during each one of the keeper's turn, he'll gain um, one threat. Threat is kind of like the cost of the card per investigator on the board. So if it's only a two-person game, then you only get one threat turn. And you can use the threats however you want to. You can use them to cast your spells, or you can use them for other cards. Well, <clears throat> what if you take a hit? All right. Say you get attacked by something and you end up taking damage. That's where these cards come in line. These are your drama coming out. They're called trauma cards. They happen whenever certain events happen in the fold. And as you guys can see, there's a little heart right here. And this says, grabs temple and squint. I mean, squints. Ugh, I don't see anything down here, but you may want to take a look yourself. Whenever you explore, treat the room as if it was in total darkness. It's called a loss of vision. So if you take a hit, I could play this on you and it make you look I me mean, basically you have to act like you've lost your vision and the room you're currently in is dark but you also have these that if you're scared or something i could play these on you to make the horror even worse so there's different little things that the keeper can throw into it because these are called mythos cards uh you can use these at any time during the investigator's turn and this one says the requirement for playing it is you have to give up one threat and you have to be in, I mean, the investigator has to be in the foyer, hallway, or cave. The hallway in front of you appears to stretch on forever. It is impossibly long. Impossible. Take one horror or allow the keeper to draw two trauma cards. So, would you rather take a horror or allow the keeper to draw two more cards that he could use on you later? See how it kind of unravels? And on top of that, the keeper could throw monsters onto the board. And these work, I mean, these are where they're kind of cool. Uh, right here, I have a few of the monsters laid out for you. This is the big guy. Um, I'm eventually going to get paint, that way I can paint them look cool, but as you can see, they are highly detailed little figurines. They do have abilities on the bottom of them, and their abilities are activated. Um, you have a witch, a chintonian, a maniac, and some little weird flying creature thingy. But, <clears throat> yeah, if you draw the right card, it allows the keeper to throw these things out into the board. That way, you have to try to fight it, so kind of makes things a little bit difficult. Um, the battle system in it is actually very, very good. Combat is very, very easy. So I have to give uh, I mean, uh, Fantasy Flight a huge thumbs up on coming out with this game. It's very addictive. It's very... Uh, well, it kind of throws you into the whole storyline of it. it. makes you feel like you're actually there and these events are kind of happening to you. So I have to recommend it to all my guys out there that play any kind of table campaigns and for you guys I hope this gives you a little bit more of a informational look on how exactly Matches of Madness plays out and hope you guys enjoy rate comment subscribe let me know what you think this is Shadow Slayer from Team Sentinel and I'm out